So we're at week three of the class. Week one was just a kind of getting to know you, getting to know the class. Week two was a little bit of HTML. And week three is going to be a little bit of CSS. Next week, we're going to cover a little bit of JavaScript. And then after that, we're going to start to look at things like servers and WordPress and so forth. So you're not going to be a pro at the end of these first three weeks in HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Um, I've been doing web design stuff since about 2001. So all you need is about um, 18 years and you'll be okay and you'll be able to do all of this stuff or take a few of our classes. I'm going to make a new folder in my flash drive, call it today's date, however you'd like. It's 9919 today if you didn't notice. On week one, I mentioned that there were a variety of code editors. There were a variety of code editors. Canvas mentioned a few code editors. Anyone remember some of the code editors that were mentioned last week? Visual code, Visual code yeah. Anything else? No plus plus. no plus plus, good. Anything else? Brackets. There's lots of code editors out there. Dreamweaver, plain old notepad, text wrangler. There's lots of code editors out there. There's even like a mini code editor in your readings, that live output where you can actually type inside of the lecture article. You can type real code there and test it out. There's also jsbin.com. So there's lots of ways to edit code. In these labs, it looks like we've got brackets in here, what else do we have? Do we have Visual Code in here? Uh, do we have Notepad? We've got Notepad++. We've got uh, Visual Code. No. We've got Brackets. So we've got a few different kinds of editors in these labs. Obviously, on your own computer, you pick the editor that you want, that you want to use, and you stick with it. So I'm going to go with Brackets. Let's go to the Start menu. All of it ultimately is just software to write code. So it doesn't matter which one you use, although you have people develop a preference. But go to your start menu and activate or run the, the app brackets. And I'm going to turn down the light so we can see a little better. Let's start the app brackets. When it starts up, it just gives you a, uh, a sample website, this getting started thing. and. I'll come back to it in a moment, but if I want to see this result of a web page, even though I've been doing this for like 18 years, I still don't think visually in HTML until I see it as an actual website. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, that's code. What does it actually look like? I have to view my result. I have to render my result. So in brackets, we have a couple of ways to do it. Visual code is is a, a couple of ways to do it as well but one way that I would see my result is if I've got this file on my flash drive I can double click the file and view it but I don't actually have this on my flash drive yet this sort of like template thing um, in brackets they've got this little lightning bolt at the top right over here live preview um, visual code doesn't have it but again They've got some menu item somewhere, like run code or something. Or if my file is on my flash drive, I just double click it to view it. But here in brackets, click that little lightning bolt. It's going to then simply open your web browser because it's a website. And this is the little template thing that it gave us. It, it says, yeah, this is, this is brackets and this is your guide and whatever. So. Um, basically, when you work with code, you have a few steps of uh, writing your code, saving your code, running your code. And so in brackets, obviously, if we make changes here, then I would click Save, and then I would click the Live Preview to run the code. In Visual, in visual Code, I would still write the code, save the code, and if you don't find the button in Visual Code to run my code, what I would just do is go to my folder and double click it. That's running my code. So this, temp, uh, this template file, OK, great, it's nice. We don't need it. Let's go to File, Close All. I'm going to close my currently open files. I don't need to actually work with that. What I need to do is 
I created a folder on my flash drive or my desktop. I need to tell brackets or visual code or notepad or whatever, go into this folder because my code will be here, work with this folder. So we'll go to file, open folder. Let's tell brackets or visual code. This is the folder where my project is at. Let's go to file, open folder. And then when you go to open folder, you want to select the folder that this uh, today's work will be inside of. So open folder. I'm on my flash drive, so I'm going to select the folder I just created. Double click and select. So on the left side, it shows um, brackets knows that this folder that I created a moment ago on my flash drive is my project folder. When you turn this in, you can upload the individual files, the HTML file, CSS file, the image file, or you can zip it all up together into a zip file and upload the zip file. If you need any help with that, of course, we'll, we'll help you. But if you manage to turn in the homework from last week, I'm sure you've done a version of this. This should not be completely alien. Maybe it is in a different software, but if you were able to turn in the homework, I'm sure you did a version of this with Notepad or with Visual Code or etc. Just a quick show of hands. How many of you used Visual Code last week to do your homework? Uh, a lot of people, seems like. How many of you used Notepad++ to do the work last week? A few people, okay. How many of you used uh, brackets? A few more people. Okay, yeah, so this, for more than half of you, this should not be alien. For those of you that didn't use brackets, it's slightly different, but the same idea should be comfortable enough. Um, did anyone, uh, was anyone an advanced hacker and you used Vim? No? Okay, never mind. Let's go to File, New, File Menu, New. And then File, Save As. So I'm about to save a file into my flash drive. And um, we were using a certain naming convention for your files here. Uh, what are we usually calling our file here that we're working with? Last name, last name dash index. Yep. So go ahead and put your last name, index.html. Sometimes, if you don't put that HTML file, well, your computer then won't know what kind of file is this, and when you try to run it, it doesn't run properly, because it doesn't know. .html is a website. What is .jpg? What kind of file is jpg? Image. Image. What kind of file is .mp3? Music. Um, what about, what about .css? CSS style file, yeah. So if you don't put an extension, sometimes um, your computer cannot run your file properly. And over here, um, yeah, just so your your last name, don't put your last name Campos unless it is, which according to the roster, no one is. So uh, your last name dash index dot HTML. We have a totally then empty blank document, which is the best thing and the worst thing. It's the best thing because I have so many possibilities of what I can create. It's the worst thing because where do I even get started? So we're going to uh, set up a very basic HTML file based on the example from our readings on Canvas I mentioned. If you need a starting point file, follow this link. So we will create something like it off the top of our heads to get the practice of what a very basic HTML structure is. So zooming in here, we have the angle brackets, exclamation, doc type, space HTML. This defines that our document is an HTML document. Actually, can I zoom in a little better? Let me do it this way. You can press Control plus to zoom in if you want to look at it larger. And then we have the elements of HTML, the elements of head and the elements of body. So we, this was covered in the readings last week. These are the basic elements 
that define a website. This week we're covering CSS, but we still need the basic structure of a um, of a website. HTML code is concerned about the structure and the content of a site. CSS is concerned with the design of a site, the colors, the fonts, etc. Then when we get to JavaScript, JavaScript is concerned about the interactivity. I press a button and something happens. So each of those three languages has a purpose and a structure and a syntax and so forth. Um, I want to define a meta tag here. The meta tags are content beyond the main part of the document um, that define various basic aspects. And I'm about to add something called a car set. Some of these things you kind of read them and like, how do you even say them in real life? Uh, some people say car set. Uh, question. Yes. Uh, can we download that on these Can you download what? You can download anything to these computers, yes. Uh, the th only thing is that you'll need to re-download and install next time because things get erased once you uh, turn off the computer. So we're adding something called car set. From your readings, do you remember the technical term of what this thing inside of an HTML element is called? What is this thing? What's that? Heard something? Attribute. It is it is a it is the car or character set <coughs> attribute. So this little bit of code inside of an element is an attribute covered last week. And we're saying here the character set is UTF-8. Uh, we're basically saying the characters that we're using in this document are all of them. Short answer. What languages can we use? What symbols and so forth? Okay, I want to add the element, the HTML code, the HTML element, where I can put the title of my website at the top of the browser. What is the HTML element? So I can put the title of my website at the top. Title. Trick question. So we'll say uh, CSS practice. The title will render, will appear at the top of the web browser. So basically every tag has a task or a purpose. And let's say, to pick a number, there's 200 HTML tags. You don't have to have them all memorized. I don't. I just appear that I do. But you can look them up easily. Look up the ones I need to make bullet points. Let me look that up. And then you learn it and maybe memorize it. You don't have to have them all memorized. I want to create in the main body of the document a big bold heading that defines what my site is about in the main body. What is the HTML element to make a big old heading? H1, heading number one. We'll say, um, CSS lecture, and then today's date. OK, so we, <clears throat> we write the code, we save the code, we run the code. 10 lines, this is enough. This defines a website, not an amazing looking one or an interactive one. This is a website. More complex websites, like the college's website, are thousands of lines of code. 10 lines of code is enough code to make a website. Um, so we write the code, save the code, run the code. I wrote the code. I will save the code. Notice over here we've got this little dot, which is kind of reminding you haven't saved yet. So once I save, it goes away. Visual code, I think, shows it in a slightly different area. Notepad shows it in a different area. But OK, I've saved it. Now I'll run the code, and I have two options. Somewhere your interface will, will have a button run the code. Or if all else fails, you just go to your folder, and I've got something in my folder, and if I double click it, I run it, and I see the result. So save your code, write your code, save your code, run your code, see your result. Because um, 
that code looks like it's right, but I won't know if it's really right until I actually render it, until I actually run it in a browser. Did everyone get that? Do you get your heading one at the top and then your title at the top over here and nothing else weird? Everyone good on that? Anyone need a little help? So 10 lines is enough to have a very basic website right here. Um, there is no CSS styling at the moment. It looks just totally uh, plain and, um, and, and defaults, black text on a white background. Unless we write CSS code, we get the defaults, black text on a white background. The funny thing is, way back in the beginning, the very first websites, like in 1990, they were black on gray. Um, I remember those early, early websites that they were so simple, and it was black on gray. Well, black on white is a little bit more readable, so now that's the default. But if we want to change the defaults, that's the purpose of CSS. I want to change that font. I want to change the colors of the background or the letters. I want to put my image on the right side. The default is an image is on the left side. I want it on the right side or the center. So that's the big idea of what CSS is, to change the defaults. Before we do that, we need a little bit more content. So let's do this. Let's say on the next line, we're going to say heading two. We've got another big, bold heading that will define the content. Uh, and we will say, uh, my hobbies. You all probably have a couple of hobbies here and there. New paragraph. So HTML is a markup language. HTML, hypertext markup language. It marks your content. I've marked the word my hobbies to be big and bold. That's the markup language. Whoops. I've marked it to behave a certain way. That's the purpose of HTML, to mark it. Therefore, um, it doesn't know where do you want an image, where do you want a paragraph, do you want columns? We have to mark that up. We have to write the code to tell it what we want. And so this P tag for this paragraph, I will just write a simple sentence, a few of my hobbies that I enjoy. And a paragraph in the world of HTML does not need to be, you know, actual three sentences or four sentences. It can be one word. It's just that the HTML P element is designed with making different um, blocks of code. And when you save it and run it, and if you want to see your result, it looks something like that. You may get some pop-ups of color. That's just notepad. Uh, that's just um, um, brackets, kind of telling you that okay, if you if I click on this, it's that's your H1 that you wrote. If I click on my hobbies, it'll highlight there. That's your H2. So not not all code editors do do this that if you click on your website, it then highlights where you wrote it. Every, web, every code editor is a little different. OK, so um, we are going to list, you are going to list a few of your hobbies. So what are you into? Movies, TV, comic books, video games, etc. We're going to divide, we're going to pick three hobbies and we're going to write a little bit about each one of them i just want to create content first then we will introduce css to style it so one of my hobbies is comic books another one of my hobbies is uh, magic the gathering another one of my hobbies is movies so i'm listing three hobbies that i have I've been using H1, 2, and 3. Why do you think I didn't continue with H4 and 5? 
it's kind of an advanced question, but why do you think I did not use H4 and 5 for my next hobbies? They get smaller and smaller. They get smaller and smaller. Every time you use another heading, they get smaller, visually. But they also get smaller in importance. H1 is like the biggest, most important thing on the screen. It's the whole name of my site. H2, H3, etc. sort of divide up the content into sections. Because now I've got a section all about my hobbies. Maybe I'll make a brand new section about things I don't like. That would also be an H2. There's a whole chunk of content, H2, about my hobbies. Then there could be another section with the big idea of things I don't like. That's another H2. And then things inside of that section are subdivided into comics, magic, and movies, H3s. So this would be a good example to write a note in our code. I'm going to back up to line 8. And I'm going to write the note or the comment element, the comment code. So for, as per the readings, everything that happens in here is going to be a comment. It's not actually going to be rendered. It's not going to be processed. It's just a place to write notes. So in the readings, it was mentioned, and I'll mention it here because it's very important. Uh, heading elements divide the content on screen. H1 for the main concept of the site. H2 to H6 for the sub-content or sections of content. So my whole document is a heading one. The whole document is today's lecture. I've got a section for hobbies. Later, I'll do another section for uh, things I don't like. And then within hobbies, I've listed three more, H3, H3, H3. So there's a hierarchy to all of these things. We're dividing up the content into various pieces. Now, a lot of times when, it, when we do these lectures, OK, I, I may type something, but you're free to change things up a little bit as long as you have the basic concept in there. Obviously, I'm not asking you to type exactly these hobbies. You probably don't have those hobbies. Maybe if you do, that's cool. But if not, you have other hobbies. Um, but this is my project so far. Let's save it and run it. Um, let's confirm that it looks as it's supposed to. We're not supposed to see this comment appear on screen. It's, it's a comment. It's not, it should not actually appear on screen when you, when you save it and, and run it with the, with the little bolt right there. Let me confirm on mine. Usually I'll write the code, I'll confirm mine's OK, and then I'll get back to the code. But it should look like that. I've got my H1 right at the top. I've got a big section of content, my hobbies. I've got a paragraph. I've got three subsections where I'm going to fill in some content, and then I could have another section after that in a moment about other stuff. Here's what I've got so far. And this comment did not appear because I wrote it properly, opening and closing tabs, or tags, <laughs> tags, elements. All right, did that work OK for everyone? Anyone need any help? I'm going to list. Um, in each of these subsections of three hobbies, I'm going to put some things into bullet points to, to mention examples of three or four things of each of these that I like. So whatever yours are. Comics, for example, here. Now, the tabbing and all of that is not necessary. Technically, everything, all of your code could be to the left, and it'll still work. But 
simply tabbing is useful because uh, you will see like this content is part of this content if I tab it. I'm going to tab here. I'm talking about comic books. I'm going to mention three things and I want it as bullet points. Anyone remember, how do we make bullet points in HTML? LI for list item, yes. UL for unordered list. Yep, it's two things. We need to say, first of all, there's a big old list. And then each individual item. So UL, unordered list. We're about to make a list of things that don't have an order. And then each particular item, list item, each particular bullet point is a list item. So I'll mention a few comic books here. You mention three or four of your particular thing that you like per section. So I'll say Spider-Man. Do another one. Spider-Gwen. I'll say another one. Spider Ham. <laughs> All the spider characters. Whatever you want. Three items, three list items, three bullet points. Three unordered bullet points. The result should be something like that. And again, for the other ones, I'm going to list a few bullet points as well, two or three or four, or whatever, on the next two. So practice that for a moment. Add a few more things that you like in each of those subsections. Save it and check your work every once in a while. You don't want to write 40 lines of code and then check your work, because you might have messed up on line three, and you've written 70 more lines. So you write your code for, for a moment, one or two lines, save it, run it, check that it behaves like it's supposed to. And then we continue. Now again, this this is not this should not be brand new. That you should not be completely agog about this. You've uh, hopefully done your homework from last week, and you, we covered these things. So this is a little bit review. So again, I'll add. Now let me show you an advanced hacker technique right here. I want to make three more bullet points. Right click, copy. Right click, paste. Super advanced, and it saved me some effort. I just need to change it. Mm -hmm. And I just want to change the details. It's another set of, it's another unordered list. It's another three things. Why not just copy and paste? So, let me see here, what do we want to put here? I want to put the three magic sets that I like, I guess. So we'll do Ice Age, Ixalan, and uh, Throne of Eldraine. And then movies. I'll list three movies I like. So whatever your three hobbies that you selected, you want to fill in the content. We haven't gone to CSS yet because everything's still plain, black and white. The font is still the basic, times. The, the sizes are still the same, basic. We need some content before we can apply CSS. So we're creating some content. Star Wars, well, which one? Well, whatever, just put some content. I'll say Halloween. We'll say, um, Akira. So just create content, save it, run it. You should have some bullet points, some content. And um, then we'll start to style it very soon. No one having any trouble? Everything's going along well?
So this is very uh, familiar to what we did last week as also part of the assignment. Um, there were two more things in general that we did last week as well. Um, kind of a vague question maybe, but what else did we do last week when we did a little basic HTML file? Does anyone remember what else did we do with our HTML project besides? We added an image, so we'll add an image in a moment. Good. Anything else? Hyperlink. Hyperlink. So we want a link, and then we want an image. So I want a link to something. Um, anywhere here, I want to make a link. And let's say for one of these movies, the best answer was would be that I would have a link that goes directly to the um, uh, the actual article of that thing but I'll just put a basic link um, in this case so I'm gonna pick one of my movies and the link element is one of the ones that doesn't quite make sense the first time it's an a it's an a tag it's an a element even though you would think well why isn't it named like the other things like link we actually do have a link tag but it doesn't do what you think and one thing is I've started to type my A tag and I want to wrap it around one of my movies. And my code editor says, let me help you. Let me open and close your tag. But it didn't actually help me because it's not wrapping around what I want there to be the link of. And that often happens with code editors that once you start adding some code after you've added some content, it might not add it exactly how you think. That's just the nature of it. So that needs to be inside of that. Question? On my That's a good point. Sometimes when we're typing, uh, do you ever notice that your cursor might change? Uh, normally my cursor is a vertical line, and sometimes it may switch over to that under line. You've switched over to the overtype mode, which is listed right here. This is a mode where you're going to erase what you've already typed, which usually is not useful. But it's right next to the backspace, so it's very easy to hit it on accident. So if your cursor changes to that underline, change it back with the insert key. OK, so I'm going to make the movie Akira an active link. That's how you can remember it. An active link, a tag, an active link to some website. And pretty much all the code we've written so far has been the tag the opening and closing tag. But this one is incomplete because it's a link, but we don't know where it goes. We have to add the href attribute to further define it. So inside the tag, href quotes. I'm just going to put the Internet Movie Database. I'll get the exact link later. But now I want to make that a clickable active link. So I've wrapped the A element, the A tag, around it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. I should see that that now is a link. I can hover my mouse on it, and it looks like it's a link. And when I click it, it should go to the website. That's how you can confirm that works. So confirm that that works, save it, run it, check your link, make sure it goes to where you expect it. <clears throat> and so in this uh, example, you know, if I mistyped something, HRF is wrong, but if I if I type that and try to check my result, it, it, do, it doesn't work. And that's the thing about this. One wrong character can break it. Not a wrong command, but one wrong character, one letter, one symbol. And that's just kind of practice. Um, some memorization, but it's practice. 
now that's an active link and I click on it and it goes to the website I would want to get the exact link I would copy and paste the exact link to that movie to read that movie exactly and I would paste it in here but for the moment this is fine this is an active link I, I don't doubt actually there's probably like akira.com or akira.co.jp or something but I just want a link For images, um, let's say I want to add an image somewhere, maybe, maybe before I start to mention my hobbies, maybe I want an image between the H1 and the H2. I just want to put an image somewhere, so I'll put it near the top. Uh, we need to add the IMG element, the image element, the image tag, and then I need to add the attribute to say which image, and then I'll have an image. It might be too big, it might be too small, this is where CSS will come in. This happens all the time. I picked a great looking image for my site, but it's huge, and it's on the left, but I want it in the center. This is where CSS comes in. HTML just cares about the content. Here's where my image will appear, here's where my links will appear, here's where my content will appear. But how does it look? That's going to be for CSS. So let's back up over here to before the H2. I want to create a paragraph where instead of text, I'm going to have an image. So a paragraph doesn't have to have just text. It can have images, or tables, or um, animation. But a paragraph is just a little kind of like unit in your design. If I look at this flyer, it's obviously a real physical thing. But I can define it with HTML code. I have this screen, this page. I have then an h1, a nice big old heading with big old text. I have an image at the top, image tag. I have a background color, background image, that's CSS. Um, I have down here another paragraph. I moved it down. So this can be defined with HTML and CSS. This real physical thing could be defined in code. I need an attribute, source. I'm going to go find an image on the internet and I'm going to copy the link to that image and paste it in here. So the cool thing about the web, websites, when they were invented in about 1989, the cool thing about it was it was supposed to be about a very collaborative technology. It was invented in a, in a university in Europe and the student there that invented it wanted to create some sort of language where documents were linked together. One research document linked to another one. This research document with a graphic of a table. Uh, that is a, a graphic that had like a chart. <laughs> and so this, was, this language was invented in about 1989. So these, these web languages are not that old. Yes, it's 30 years old, but other technologies have been around hundreds of years. Website coding, website technology, 30 years. It's a lot younger than a lot of other technologies. And it was invented in a way that would be very collaborative. So all I need to do is plug in the link right there to an image, and it appears. So I need to go do a little research. I'm going to go over here and look for maybe, um, I don't know, movie poster, Star Wars. I'm going to go try to find some image somewhere. Let's see if I can find one. Oftentimes, when you find a particular image, you are um, 
you are able to right click the image and depending on your browser you might have something like copy link address or copy image location so all of these images exist online somewhere with some sort of link sometimes they are protected so it might not work exactly as you expect but I'm going to try to find some sort of picture online and then right click copy link address and then paste it into my source Let's see if this works sometimes Sometimes it's not as direct because, again, the image might be protected. When you paste in your link, oftentimes if it does end in a JPEG or GIF or ping, it usually works. A moment ago I pasted in this other one which didn't really end in that, so maybe I could go track down the image, but that's too much effort. So as long as your link that you copy seems to end in those types of graphics formats, it'll probably work. There's lots of ways to get an image, and for educational purposes, whatever we do here is fine. But when we have like a real website with for a real client and such, we need to be careful about copyrights, which we'll cover later. I just want to put an image in my project. There it is. And it's amazing, but it's huge. Well, again, I'm going to fix that via CSS a little later. So if your image is huge like this too, uh, don't worry about it. We're going to fix it with CSS. All right, so we've got a very basic HTML file. We've got an image. We've got some headings, some paragraphs, some bullet points, a link. That's a website. That in 1989 was revolutionary that everything every every technology every invention at a certain point didn't exist and when then when it exists it's amazing this obviously doesn't look like a very advanced or complex website that we're used to where's the animation where's the music where's the interactivity but that in 1989 and 1990 that literally revolutionized the world this code that we're writing right here this changed the world now we visit websites we chat with friends, we buy movie tickets online, we do our banking, we do all of this interaction, interactivity, we chat with people all over the world. Behind the scenes, all of it is some form of code, often HTML code. And at one point, this didn't exist. And then it did. And it has uh, changed the world. So learning this language, you can get it all for free, like in the various lectures that I have in the canvas you can get it out of a book you can get it out of videos but that's the great thing about this language this technology when this was invented it was going to be put out there to the world to use and this could have been trademarked this could have been copyrighted this could have been locked down and some technologies are like that that someone invents it and if you want to use it you've got to pay but this was put out there totally for free and I think that's amazing the person that gave it away he's still alive he is Sir Tim Berners-Lee. He was actually been knighted by the Queen of England for his invention. Um, his invention changed the world. And he's still around. He's still alive. He gave it away for free to the world. <clears throat> he's doing fine. He's got a mansion and all of that. He's, he's been knighted by the Queen. But um, this is an amazing technology that was given away and really revolutionized things. And for us, we've written 39 lines of code or so. And we've got a very basic kind of website. And it looks a little boring. But that's how it was in the beginning, just text and maybe an image. Uh, after, we'll take a break in a moment. 
Eventually then a language, CSS, was invented, 1996 or so. And then that was, well, let's make it look nice. Let's change the colors, the fonts, the alignment, the images. So we'll learn that right after the break. It's 2.02. .02. Let's take a break until 2.12, 10-minute break. And we'll be back and cover a little CSS.